Welcome back to the Hulk, right here at Comic Storian. This is where we take some of your favorite comic books, video games, and movies, and we break them down into digestible bites to allow you to catch up on them and be the cool kid at your comic book store. When we last left off with the Hulk, the real Hulk had arrived. A being known as Zemnu was being used by Roxxon as a way to get back at the Hulk for crashing their stock prices when he attacked them on social media. I know, it sounds a little crazy, but we're getting back to a more classic Hulk storyline as Zemnu has messed with everyone's minds and altered their memories to think that he is the one true Hulk, the one from their past. He's filling their brains with nostalgia so that they only think of him. When Devil Hulk returned to the Black Ops base that he has taken control of, the individual that has been working with him at the Shadow Ops base didn't really remember who the Hulk was. While she was talking to Devil Hulk, she remembered exactly who the Hulk is, Zemnu. Today we're covering Immortal Hulk 32 and 33. Soon the world begins to remember Zemnu. He was there for everything. He was the one who assembled the Avengers. He was known as the Living Hulk. He was the Earth's mightiest hero. He was an X-Man and he was everything. Every news piece on Zemnu has everyone praising him and talking about how Zemnu was always there for them. Minotaur of Roxxon sits back in his chair in his office stating that this is rather interesting. He wasn't expecting Zemnu to be so powerful. Zemnu tells him, yes, my powers are only going to grow stronger. But the strongest in a context, through a screen, through a culture, television. Television in your home. Television on your phone. Television by your bed. Television in your head. Don't you remember? He goes on stating that while he hid and licked his wounds, he began to appear harmless. And this became his planet. Zemnu's magic planet. Minotaur laughs, telling him, You're Planet Hulk, of course. Although it didn't work on me. I am Dario Agar. I of all people know how the sausage is made. I mention that in case your eyes are getting bigger than your stomach, Zemnu. Zemnu tells him that their deal is acceptable. Once he is done with this world, when it is a dying shell, it will be his home. He will convert those humans who survive to be as he is. But in order to do that, he must repair his physical form. Sustenance is required. I am very hungry. Minotaur says, of course. Travers, get Zemnu a meal. Travers tells him that he can get him something, but it will take some time. With all of the disappearances, give him an hour. He'll find someone who won't be missed. Minotaur tells Zemnu that that is an acceptable time. But Zemnu then says, but he is hungry now. Minotaur pours himself another drink, telling Travers that he's sorry. As the mechanical parts inside begin to unfold into small arms and clamps, Travers begins to yell, Wait! You can't! Wait! Please! The arms lunge out, grabbing Travers, and as it pulls him into the gaping maw of the machine attached to Zemnu, Minotaur tells him, Yes, it's unfortunate. But the thing is, people like you are always replaceable, Travers. And right now, I only have access to one Hulk. Supply and demand, my friend! Supply and demand! Meanwhile, back at Shadow Base, Bruce Banner stares at himself in the mirror, stating that nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong! Rick knocks on the door, asking if everything is okay. They were seeing some weird stuff about him on the TV. Bruce struggles to keep the Hulk inside, telling him, Yeah, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. The mirror, it's holding. The Hulk isn't coming out. Rick tells him, Okay. So what are you doing in here, Bruce? Bruce wipes the sweat from his brow, telling him, I'm planning my next move. We've been concentrating far too hard on Roxxon. Our strategic strikes, protests, non-lethal attacks, responding to distress calls. Rex says that it really doesn't sound like the Bruce that he knows. Things won't make the necessary impact. They're going to need to strike harder. Hit the humans where it hurts. Hit some soft targets. Make the puny humans afraid again. Rick tells him, you know, you don't really sound like the Bruce Banner that I know. And Bruce asks, why are you calling me that? My name is Robert Banner. Who do you think you're talking to? 
Meanwhile, in another part of the base, McGowan stops by Samson's room asking if they can talk for a moment. There's some video footage that she was going over, and there is a weird, strange bit that she heard. She isolated one sentence in particular. So with no context, just listen to it and say the name that he hears. McGowan begins to play the video, and it's a recording of her talking. And then saying, Then Daredevil happened, and I went to... Samson listens and says, I would say that you said Daredevil. McGowan tells him, Okay, I was worried that I might have been hallucinating. This might be worse. Samson asks if there's a problem. Should he have heard something else? And McGowan tells him, No, she heard Daredevil as well. She just doesn't remember saying that. She doesn't remember Daredevil. She remembers Zemnu. Samson asks, Zemnu? Like from the TV show, Magic Planet? McGowan asks, did he ever watch that show? And Samson tells her that he did. Maybe? McGowan asks if he ever studied the Mandela effect. And Samson says, of course he did. It's a term for false memories that find their way into a public consciousness. Similarly, that movie about the genie never existed. Neither did Jiffy, Peanut Butter, Mirror Mirror on the Wall, and so on. McGowan says, right. The Magic Planet, a show that everyone remembers, but nobody watched. It never existed. It's in all of their heads. Samson sits back down stating that there could be something rewriting their memories, and that would be horrific. If there was proof like that footage, McGowan tells him that they can't rely on that alone, though. She may have caught that, but what if somebody's more susceptible? What if somebody was specifically targeted? If Zemnu's been rewriting everybody, Everybody includes Dr. Banner. Just then, the sound of breaking glass can be heard, and the two jump up and run towards the source of that noise. As they enter the restrooms, McGowan asks what happened, and Rick says that they can take a look for themselves. He and Bruce were mid-sentence, and he just turned to the mirror, and, well, Banner smash. Banner looks at his bleeding hands and says, Oh, you guys shouldn't make a fuss. The simple-minded brute is becoming a distraction, and distractions are going to be removed. You know how it is. You understand it's rational. I'd hate for you not to be rational about this team. But inside of Bruce's mind, the Hulk punches back at the mirror shouting, Stupid, stupid Banner! White thing is in stupid Banner's head! And everyone's head! Everyone but Hulk! Because Hulk is Hulk! Hulk continues punching away and then a voice tells him that Zemnu's rewritten him. It's not something you can punch, it's stronger than you are. Hulk looks back to see yet another Hulk walking towards him. Another one in the mental mindscape of Bruce Banner. And Hulk asks, Who? The Hulk walking forward tells him, While well, Zemni's stronger than you are, it's not stronger than we are. After all, I'm the strongest one that there is. And as Planet Hulk stops in front of him, he towers over the Savage Hulk asking, Don't you remember? Back outside of Bruce Banner's mind, he tells everyone that his name is Robert, and that is his name, and it has always been his name. The name of the man who ends the world. He knows he shouldn't want that, or he should want it in a metaphorical sense, wanting and not doing. But has he been limiting himself all of these years, limiting his true potential? What would happen if Robert Banner just let go? McGowan tells him that he needs to listen. He's been infected by something they all have. Something has been altering their memories. Some alien presence is creating a societal group memory as a form of camouflage. It disguises itself as something that we'll all accept, something that we'll all trust, like a TV show from our childhood, a superhero. It has to be a Roxxon attack. It's possible that it may have made a deal with them. Bruce asks if they're saying that his memories aren't real. Because I have such a clear memory, McGowan, of the sound of my father's skull when it broke on my mother's tombstone when I killed him! And it was no accident, McGowan! Was I not acting like my true self in that moment? Because sometimes it gets dark in here. Dark and strange. Back inside of Bruce's mind, Savage Hulk and Planet Hulk walk into the distorted and strange world. And Savage Hulk tells him, Hulk, remember this place. A place like this place, but strange now. Cogs and gear and junk. Face looking back at Hulk. What is this place? Planet Hulk asks him, Do you not remember? You used to spend a lot of time here. Back in Banner's inner world. His mindscape, and it's been going downhill ever since, Savage. I've been trying to help Banner from the inside. I've been trying to help him heal. But then Hulk begins to sniff the air, and Planet Hulk asks him, What is it? And Hulk says, Hulk, not sure. Odd smell. 
Planet Hulk climbs onto the top of a hill telling him, It must be all the trash here. Oh look, here's some of it now. Planet Hulk points down at a chained Hulk, stating, There's a snake in our grass. The big bad Devil Hulk who wanted to break the world. There's one good thing that came out of this. No more of this scaly creep running around. He's locked up tight again, and he's never getting out. Planet Hulk kicks the Devil Hulk, and Savage Hulk tells him to stop. What's wrong? Why would we stop, Savage? He's been trouble since the start, ordering us around, telling us when he can come out, acting like he's our dad. Remember Brian Banner? Hulk then spits in his hand and says, Hulk is Hulk, and Hulk is Hulk too, and Hulk is kind of Hulk. Hulks are hoax. As Savage Hulk begins to pull at the giant chain, Planet Hulk tells him to stop that. But Savage Hulk continues to pull, telling him, Chain is strong, but Hulk is stronger, and Hulk must be. Soon the strength fades as the chain falls back down, and Planet Hulk asks, Are you done yet? You aren't the strongest here. Trust me on that. Besides, I'm going to need all of your strength for what's in store next. Look over there. Hulk sees toys scattered around at a young boy watching TV. And Hulk says, Hulk never had toys. But back as the child is laughing and eating, he shouts, Yay! As Zemnu appears on the TV, and Hulk says, White thing inside Hulk's mind. What does White thing want with boy? Who is boy? Planet Hulk tells him, That's you or us. The kid is Banner. This is the childhood Banner always wanted. But we're the childhood he got. Hulk climbs up onto a platform stating, Hulk always hurts. Hulk always hurts. Always and always and always. He charges and punches through the TV with Planet Hulk telling him, Good, good boy. As Hulk pulls his arm back, he leans down asking, What was inside TV? It goes on forever. But Hulk see light. What is Hulk seeing? Planet Hulk tells him that that is his way out. Go get him, Savage. Hulk leans further in, shouting, Yes, yes, Hulk sees the way! Hulk will go get White Thing! Hulk crawls through the TV out into the real world, and Bruce falls over with Samson yelling that he's choking. McGowan runs over, but suddenly she stops and Samson lets go. Two green fingers begin to stretch out of Bruce Banner's mouth until finally the Hulk's arm thrusts through. Seconds later, the Hulk bursts through, ripping Bruce's body apart, shouting, Hulk is free! Everyone stares and Hulk tells them, Listen to Hulk, green hair, and you science woman! White thing made humans think that he is Hulk! Hulk is not Hulk! And when Hulk say Hulk, humans think Hulk say nonsense words! But Hulk is Hulk! Hulk is always Hulk! Hulk is chained inside! All that is Hulk! Hulk's system has been hurt! And hurt, stupid Banner, other Hulks, they boss Hulk! Tell Hulk when to come, when to go, and talk, and talk, and talk! But Hulk only Hulk left, and it's Hulk's time now, and Hulk not talk. Roxxon send big monsters, big show for White Thing, so White Thing with Roxxon. Now Hulk go where Roxxon live, and Hulk finish White Thing! Who is Hulk? Within seconds, Hulk and the others storm Roxxon Plaza, and Samson asks if this is really the best course for them. They need a plan to deal with Roxxon carefully and methodically. Hulk says, too careful, too much talk, too much waiting. Give Bullman time to hurt everyone, stupid banner. As everyone enters the building, they see the twisted and deformed humans, all with mechanical attachments like Zemnu. Samson asks, what are these things? And Rick tells him that Hulk is right. See the metal parts? How they don't have mouths? They came from Zemnu. And that tells you what they were. Meanwhile, up in the penthouse, the Minotaur is shouting, asking what is going on? What is all of this chaos? First, the Hulk comes here. The same Hulk that's supposed to be under control. And what are they fighting? What are those things? Is that Travers? All those people you ate? Zemnu says, I converted them. Since I've internalized the conversion process to nourish me, and I'm very, very hungry. Minotaur grabs his phone, stating that this is a PR disaster. Security! Close the shutters! Lock down the building! If anybody sees security! Minotaur looks at the image on the phone, and as the security guard that Zemnu converted stares back, it changes to Zemnu's face, telling him, I am very, very hungry. As Minotaur turns back, Zemnu's mechanical arms reach out grabbing Minotaur, and Minotaur begins to yell, No! God no! We had a deal! 
Zemnu pulls Minotaur into the maw of the machine's mouth, stating, Our deal was satisfactory, but it is not satisfactory enough. Business demands winners and losers, and the strong and the weak. But back downstairs, Hulk finishes tearing the converted creatures apart, making his way towards the elevator. He rips the elevator out, shouting, Stupid gold boxes in Hulk's way! Hulk, go up now! Smash Bullman! White thing, too! Hulk's friends come! As they all reach the penthouse, Hulk finds Minotaur as a half-converted mess on the ground. He begins to ask what, but Zemnu appears, stating, Hello! Shouldn't you be subduing this planet for me? Zemnu reaches out, grabbing him by the head, telling him, Your mind is organized differently than the other human minds. No less powerful, though. So no more so either, only different. I know that you are all weak. Their mistake was treating you like a monster. You're not a monster. You're a child, Hulk. Behind them, Rick channels his gamma energy, stating, That is enough. This is going to be your only warning. This is a big mistake. You have no idea. And Zemnu asks, What I'm doing? Feeding Hulk Gamma? It doesn't matter. I'm already in the Hulk's mind. Rick tells him that you might think you've got some of the Gamma energy, but you've only got some of it. What was available? Take a look deeper. Look who's coming to meet you. Inside Hulk's mind, Planet Hulk asks, Welcome to the magic planet, huh? Wrong. Welcome to my planet! Welcome to Planet Hulk! As Planet Hulk takes over, he punches into Zemnu, destroying him and the mechanical parts. A few moments later, Hulk looks around asking, What happened? Everything went dark. Hulk went away. And then, then... Rick tells him he's okay. He beat the bad guy, just like he always does. Why doesn't he head back down? The others need some help mopping things up. Hulk turns, leaving, stating, Hulk, Hulk will do as Rick says. Rick is friend. Rick, good friend. And Rick laughs to himself, stating, <laughs> If you only knew. At that moment, Rick floats down to Minotaur, asking, What should I do with this? The crass little billionaire who thought that the four winds would forever bow to him. So he summoned them. And in they have blown. But you couldn't control Zemnu. So you most certainly couldn't control him. Could you? That said, you could still be useful. Even as wretched as you are. So you'll be allowed to live, if you call that living. But you will leave Banner to me from now on. You need to understand your place in the scheme of things. Because in this world, there are those who follow. And those who lead. And there you have it, the conclusion to the Zemnu storyline. The air quotes, because you can't see me doing it. Real Hulk? No. But now we've got more Planet Hulk. We've got the Hulk that I think unanimously everyone agrees is one of the best Hulk storylines coming back. The Hulk who basically created his own planet, became a king, had a wife, had a child, and then came over and tried to conquer Earth. That's who Planet Hulk is. You may know him from the Planet Hulk and the World War Hulk storylines, but that is that version of the Hulk. Personally, I really enjoy the fact that they're taking all these different writers' versions of the Hulk, and they're turning them all into personalities in Banner's head. But now here's the big question for you. Who do you think is controlling Rick. Because that's not the Rick that we know. If you've been reading the comics, they've already revealed who that is through revealing his origin. But I don't want to reveal that to you in this video just yet. Who do you think it is? The last line is your clue. Something about leading. Anyway, guys, don't forget to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash comic You can find us doing podcasting and D&D games over at twitch.tv slash comic And you can always subscribe and like this video if you really did like it. And we would greatly appreciate that, but it's all up to you. I don't want to force anyone into anything. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time right here.